Sports Network and the Professional Bowlers Association present the $115,000 Austin Open from the Highland Lanes in Austin, Texas. Brought to you by your neighborhood True Value Hardware Store. And by Columbia 300, home of the light dot, the white dot, the world famous yellow dot, the all new U dot. Hi everybody and welcome to uh, Deep in the Heart of Texas time because we are down in Austin, the capital. And who did you expect, Waylon and Willie? I'm Irv Brown, I can't ride a lick. My partner is Mike Durbin. I don't know if he can rope. I know he's a playing member of the PBA, but what we can do is do a respectable job and bring you the Austin Open. Should be interesting. Every week there seems to be a surprise on the PBA Summer Tour, and that's the case again this week. Thirteen rabbits started out at the beginning of the week, Mike, and we have three in the finals. That's very unusual. Or three rabbits in the top five today. We have really a lot of inexperience in the top five. Four of the players are not eligible for the Firestone Tournament of Champions. As we've mentioned already, three of them are rabbit players. What I think this will lead to is really inexperience on the show. You know, we haven't been getting very big scores from some of the experienced players. Maybe these inexperienced players can give us some better scores. One of the guys who is eligible for the Tournament of Champions is Guppy Troop. Now, Guppy has made the statement in the newspaper that he is loose and nobody is going to handle him. Can you respond to that? Well, I'll tell you what, in six weeks that we've been out here so far, the tournament leader has not bowled over 150. He bowled in the 150s or less every week. Guppy has promised us that that's not going to happen this week. He says that he's the man to beat, that they're not going to defeat him today. And boy, he's sometimes a man of his word, so we'll see. All right, let's take a look at the five bowlers we'll be seeing this evening. We start out in the fifth spot with Jim Tilton. The surfer trying to ride a wave to victory. Phil Ringner gets the fourth slot trying to win his first title in his home state of Texas. A familiar face, Mark Baker's number three. Says that his superstition is bowling on television. He's trying to overcome that this week. Next up is Dave Ferraro. An Easterner trying to win his first tournament in the West. And as we mentioned, Guppy Troop is the one they're shooting for. The Fish trying to swim upstream for his eighth title. All right, we'll be back to take a look in depth at the five bowlers right after this message. bowling fans down here they've renewed the contract next year for highland bowling center and we're delighted to be here let's take a look at the bowlers we'll look at in depth tonight once again mike durbin our pba hall of famer 14 titles to his credit will describe each one we start with jim tilton gentleman we saw last week mike jim making his second straight appearance on our telecast he has a very unusual style where he kind of holds that ball out there has a very controlled arm swing but he lifts through that ball lifts it very hard and straight you can see he's nice and slim and trim built to be a bowler so that that arm can swing by those narrow hips there he has a rough road ahead for him today and he has to win his first title by winning four matches today it's tough to come all the way up but david ozio did it last week he is cashed in every singles event he's one of the young lions as we like to describe him next up is phil ringener Phil is a player who's been on the tour for seven years. He's been a part-time player, only regular the last couple years. He throws very hard, reasonably straight. He lifts real hard and straight. He's from right here in Texas. He's only made $75,000 in his career earnings. He's made one other championship round appearance. So this is only his second time. He doesn't get a lot of opportunities like this. He wants to really take advantage of this today. And his strong suit, he feels, is his spares. The third spot goes to a familiar name and a familiar face, Mark Baker. We've seen Mark several times so far this summer. This is his sixth championship round appearance so far this year, his fourth this summer. But it's been really slim pickings for him, so to speak, this summer. He's bowled two 150s from the number one position. He hasn't been able to win on television. He sort of says that it's kind of a superstition with him today. But he's got one thing going in his favor. In his one tournament victory that he won last year in Miami, he qualified number three. And he wants history to repeat itself here in Austin, Texas today. We shall see if that happens, Usually, if you just get over the hump once you're off and running second spot dave ferraro dave is from the east he's uh has five very quick steps he throws the ball reasonably straight likes the outside angle that he's going to be playing today he has a very stoic phlegmatic face you really can't tell what's going on on the inside from watching him on the outside you look at him you can't tell whether he's bowling well or bowling poorly 
He's been on television one time before, only bowled 163. But I just have a feeling about Dave today. I think he's going to bowl well, and maybe he might be the one to win. Last night, he really showed me some intensity. He just looks like the kind of person that is ready to go. All right, they're all shooting for number one, Guppy Troop. Guppy Troop, again, a five-step player, five very quick steps, his second straight championship round appearance, playing his favorite angle out around the first arrow. As we mentioned before, he started off the tournament bowling 300. He's been in the lead from the outset. However, he needed the first strike in the 10th frame of the position round last night in order to lead the tournament. He says that no one's going to beat him today. We'll just have to wait and find out if he's true. Mike, let's put you on the spot. If you had to pick one, a, uh, put a gun to your head, who's going to win it tonight? Well, again, it's the kiss of death and whoever I pick, but I'd have to pick Dave Ferraro. All right, once again, we're down in Austin, Texas, the Highland Bowling Center. We're looking forward to a great matchup, and we will start off with Texas going against California. Kilton and Ringer, that all happens right after this message. Texas and California, Philip Ringer from Big Spring, Texas, going against Jim Tilton from Huntington Beach, California. And Mike, at the top, we mentioned the rabbit. For those who are joining us for the first time, what is a rabbit? Well, a rabbit is what we call a player who has to qualify in a pre-tournament in order to get into the regular tournament. So both these players do that on a regular basis. It's called the PTQ Pro Tour Qualifier. Every week we have them. Hey, that's Tilton, that's start. Right out. Oh, I like him. I really like his release. And once again, we made the point, Mike, he has cashed in every single event. I just think this guy has got a great future. He does get out of the ball very pretty. He doesn't get to the side of the ball very much, but he lifts it hard with his fingers, and he gets a lot of roll on the ball. I watched Ringer last night. He'll hit him on the fly. You talk about throwing it hard and straight. Whew. Yeah, he slips it down there. He's taking an extra look at that rack. In fact, he's asking for a re-rack right in the first frame. So... <laughs> The mechanics asked me earlier, they wanted me to go out and check the racks, and I said, oh, they look great to me. You know, they worked on them all day, and right away, first frame, we got a re-rack. What could be wrong on the re-rack? Generally, what most of the pros think is that the three pin is off and the five pin is off, and maybe it just looks a little bad, and it was bringing up the light, leaves the two pin. In his practice, he was practicing a lot on lane 20 and having more trouble on 20. The ball wasn't coming up, and then when he move over a little bit more, he's going high. So he needs to pick up the deuce. 26 years of age, 5'11", 215. He has earned $14,000 this year. Of course, top prize today, $16,000. Down in Austin. Here we go. Two pins, Sparrow. Shooting it from the left. Has no problem with it. <laughs> Stays clean. Of course, you want to stay perfect. It's worth $25,000. You know, if you bowl a 300 game, we haven't had one yet on television. We really haven't even had a threat, you know, except when uh, Jake started off with the first five in a row in Seattle, and so that was the closest really we've had. Ringer played some high school baseball, third and pitched. A lot of bowlers love baseball, love softball. Looks good, a little light. Gets yeah. the wall shot. He does the wall shot, the one at Dick Weber made pretty famous. All right, let's see if Jimmy Tilton, he's a real young one. He's just a pup, 20 years of age. Is that all he is? It looks older than 20, doesn't he? Take a look at big Phil Ringner. He does throw it hard. Look at his reaction, Mike. Usually when a bowler's coming in light, he'll move to his right. <laughs> he smacks those hands. I wouldn't want to be between those hands when he smacks them. Both bowlers 5'11", a difference about 75 pounds, though. Very slight Jimmy Tilton. Going for two in a row. Yeah, yep. has it. That's that roll on that ball, that excellent roll. 20 years old, you know, my son is older than he is. I imagine your sons are, too. I have a three that, uh, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. I get depressed. I'm kidding. Jimmy Tilton. He's earned $13,000 this year. This is his second career championship round appearance. Last week in the Tucson Open, he finished fifth. Lost the opening match to the eventual champ, David Ozio. Another re-rack. Right away. Sometimes you know what we need. He started getting a string with two in a row lately as a string for he's asking for another one. So he's used up two in uh, three frames already. You want to get off to he's ahead by 10 pins. If he can get one more, he's ahead by 20, and it puts a lot of pressure on ringing her right away. So he just wants those pins on spot. But sometimes pro bowlers get a little paranoid. They look at those racks, and they can see solid tens and perfectly decent racks. Double going. Third frame, Jim Tilton. Ring and there's a little girl sitting over here sucking her thumb with her cabbage patch. Oh, she's really not that interesting. 
Is it there? Sure is. Pretty shot. Turkey. Jimmy Tilton. I just like his release. Let's see if Rainer can respond. Bill's wife's name is Penny, and the little girl that Mike was talking about is Tiffany. You know, he coaches Little League Baseball in the summer. Yeah, he was telling me that was one reason he wasn't out regular before, because he stayed at home and, and did a lot of that. Big goal, he wants to be exempt from the rabbit squad. He wants to get that respect. Strike going. Try for Trying doubles for light. And gets the wall shot again. Like a tenth and falling late there, too. I watched him warm up. He did that over and over again. That's not an accent. He throws it so hard. He really does get some action. Well, he lifts real hard, too, with his fingers. His ball's alive when it hits the pins. And uh, that high, light hit like that when your ball's alive is a high percentage hit on the PBA Tour. He was the bowler of the year in Big Spring in 1977. His biggest paycheck ever. That was uh, $5,000 in the 1983 AC Delco Classic. Hold that in Alameda, California. Double going, fourth frame. Trying to even it up. Right there. Yep. Ray blows the five out of there this time. Oh, so he's still clean, but the man is still perfect. We're talking about Jimmy Tilton. Will he make it four in a row? Well, stick around and find out. People from True Value really do a great job for the PBA. $25,000 for a 300-game bowl during the telecast, and hopefully that's going to happen. We uh, want to spend some of True Value's money, and I'm sure they would really love it to happen, oh, sure. too. It hasn't happened on the PBA Tour since 1974, so it's been quite a while. Here are the money leaders. Mike Albee will not lose his spot tonight, no matter what happens. Wayne Webb is here in the audience. Mark Williams will defend next week. We'll talk about that as we develop the show. Keeping it hot, some of the other people we'll see, Marshall Holman, Dave Ozio was outstanding last week. Ozio's moving up on that money list, threatening for $100,000. Jake's at $69,000 in eighth place. Steve Wonderlich, and I understand you can get a haircut from what? Uh, somebody in Steve's family? No, it's a Winkleplex family. His oh, the Winkleplex. I right. missed it. <laughs> right. Hanging out of the top ten there. And Here's Mark are. Baker at $52,000 is in 12th place. All right. Back live. Jimmy Tilton. Will he make it four in a row? Oh, he has been good thus far tonight. Little baseball himself, Ken Shaw, has been a big influence in his life. This might be a big shot Losing for him right here, Irv, because he's had the commercial break, had to sit down. He's had to wait, and the regulars put some pressure on him, so we'll see how he responds right here. Going for four in a row. Is it there, Mike? It sure is. And he, he didn't stays like it. perfect. He didn't like the way he threw it, but he liked the result. And there is our alternate, Bill, Bill Peters. Peters. You might explain, this is it for the alternate. We're going to... Forget about it. On the PBA Tour, we have a tournament committee that sets up the rules and regulations governing the Tour, and they voted this week that from now on, a uh, bowler can finish no worse than what he has qualified. So there's no need to have the alternate anymore because if uh, the bowler can't continue, he just forfeits the match. All right, can he make it five in a row? Jim Tilton. Coming in. Yep. Oh. Still alive for that 25, and I like that. And if you're interested in how many he has had, talking about 300 games, he's had two in his career. Last 300 games, qualifying this week. He's done it on these late. And if you're also interested, if Jim Tilton can roll seven more, he will earn more money tonight than he has in his career. $23,025 career earnings. Philip Ringner certainly is no slouch. He has a turkey going, fifth frame. Regular on his tough lane, lane 20. Four. A lot of speed, light, light. He it's almost does again. it. And you can call that kind of a shot on lane 20 when the pressure gets a little bit harder or a little bit steeper. There's his wife, a little child. Very attractive. And in front, Harry Golden does such a good job. Everybody calls him Goose. Well, they're good. All right, one of the strong suits of this gentleman, Rainer, is his spare shooting. Let's see if that's true on the deuce. Yep. No problem. Well, two pins shouldn't present a problem. He is down 21. There he goes. Tilton is perfect through five. Six frame action for Phil Ringner. Spare going. There we see the scoreboard. Tim Tilton, five in a row. Ringner with 99 in the fourth. Spare up in the fifth. The difference right now, 21 pins. Tilton trying to strike on his good lane. Right 
right there again. Solid oh. ten. The solid ten is left. This is Phillips' first championship round appearance this year. Second of his career back in 83, that AC Delco Classic we were talking about. He lost his opening match to Bush Soper, 279 to 225, and he finished fifth. And Ringener left that solid ten. He looked right over at his wife, and so many of us do that, you know. Uh, Blame it on looking, your wives? No, no, we're oh. looking for sympathy, you know. You're supposed to give us sympathy at that point. So he makes the ten pin easily. He's clean, Mike, but he's in trouble because Jim Tilton has just been sensational. He has five in a row, six frames. Well, the game is far from over. Ringer is still potential, big game. Tilton can't even be thinking about 300 yet. He has to be just thinking of trying to add to his lead. Jimmy averaged 220 this week. His 1985 average is 208. Five steps. Yeah, he holds that ball out there. Trying for six in a row. Right Coming there. in. Oh, yeah. There wasn't any question about that thing. Right in that one three pocket. Well, we've been asking for good scores. And maybe this week, this is the week. Let's take a look at the gentleman who has six in a row, Mike. See how he holds that ball out here now. Five steps, and the ball goes right about over the first arrow. Maybe a board left of it this time. What a release. So I just really like this guy's release. Can he make it seven in a row? Here it comes. Coming Here in. Comes. Oh, oh, solid 10. Boy, not his fault. I'll tell you what, he put it right there. So the number seven, unlucky for Jim Tilton, as he put that thing right there, as you mentioned, Mike, but he leaves a solid 10. That six pin just jumped around and over that 10 pin and never even got close to it. What a nice little run, though, by Jim Tilton as he picks up six in a row. Now he has not had to shoot a spare, Mike. We haven't talked about this. Is this a little bit of a disadvantage? Well, he's, I'm sure he's taking a little extra time out of here. He no problem. It. He has it. Stays clean. All right. Tilton versus Rigner. Rigner is down 31. He'll get his shot when we come back. Stick with us. Brown, Mike Durbin back in Austin at the Highland Lanes, and this is the Austin Open, and Jim Tilton doing battle with Philip Ringner. The loser of this match will earn $4,000. The winner advances to take on Mark Baker. Philip Ringner was ninth after the first round of qualifying, then moved to sixth the second round, dropped to 17th in round three, fought his way back up to fourth. Heard something in the back, something disturbing him. Somebody giggled and laughed right behind him. He heard Five players that we will see tonight, Mike, have won a combined eight PBA titles. Seven by Troop, one by Baker. Three non-champions here. Both of these players non-champions. Big opportunities in their career, and they're responding very well. Still trying to get something started on lane 20. Right again, and this time a two-pin has company. It's got a two, four, five, eight, called the dinner bucket, and a very difficult spare. He not only loses count, but a tough spare to make. Our scorekeeper is Art Trask from Fresno, California. He cashed this week, 46. Art doing a good job for us. All right, let's see if the dinner bucket can indeed be picked up by Ringer. Two, four, five, eight. Shoot it from the left. On the left. Got it. Not exactly the way he was aiming at it, but he'll take it. Take a look at Ringer and let you uh, break down his style. Five-step player. Head kind of drops forward in the pros. Now watch his follow-through here. Swings out a little way from his body here. And he snaps that ball through, lifts hard. The follow-through comes up. His left arm is out there for balance. He lifts real hard at the end, which is what you're supposed to do. What I'd like to see him do, though, is have that swing in a little closer in the back swing. Coming in, and he leaves a couple. He leaves the four, seven. See, what happens when that swing gets away from your body in the back swing like that on, on the follow-through? It causes sometimes, as we can see it here right here, watch the swing. See it out away from his body right there, and it's called a swing out. Now, if he goes through it hard like that, the ball's a little left to target, and he leaves the four pin. If he tries to lift it sometimes even harder, 
He does what is known as put stop on the ball. The ball doesn't quite make it, so he gets trapped in between a light hit and a little bit high hit, and it's it, the problem would be alleviated if the swing were in closer to the back. You know, the fundamentals are similar. You look at boxing and you look at hitting the baseball, if you keep your arms in, they're both similar in the thing you just described about the arm swing and bowling is very similar. All right, eighth frame, Til tilting. Tilting on the light. other hand, see, has much narrower hips, and the swing comes back much straighter. So his ball goes to target easy. Oh, sweet shot. The only time he has not picked up a strike wasn't was in the ball. seventh. Yeah, it wasn't his ball. <laughs> He's asking for another re-rack on lane 19. He has been tough. Tilton leads it by 37. The best that Ringener can do is 232 if he strikes out. Tilton right now going in at a 249 clip, so definitely in the driver's seat right now. Strike here all but locks it up. Mike, doesn't he look more confident than last week? You were bowling and maybe didn't get to watch him as much as we I did. Didn't get, I didn't get to watch him that much uh, last week. I was trying to concentrate on my own game, but he does look very confident out there tonight. That'll happen, you know, that experience is one week. Sometimes it'll help. Looks like a double, and it is. Oh, is he tough? He's about to close. Both ringer out. He has not bowled badly. Finds himself down 47. We got a little, little wry smile from Tilton. He hit the ball a little left of his target and held up in the pocket. He's getting what we call a very good ball reaction. He can throw it a little wide and he comes back and it's a little left of his target and stays in the pocket. When you start getting that plus carry, you knock down some pins. Bring uh, light really again. light again. And light. He's got double wood, Mike, that he's got to contend with the 2-8. Yeah, well, this match is, is all but over. Phil just finishing it up right now. But he said, he said before he's going to earn $4,000, and that's uh, it's going to add to those career earnings. But a nice chance to win his first title is going down the top. Picks up the double wood to do eight. And we talked about it, that his strong suit with spares, and he's kept the game clean. And these that spares are not good enough to win this particular game because Tilton's getting so many strikes. <laughs> so Philip Ringner, unless something crazy happens, is going to finish fifth. And Jim Tilton will move on. And hey, we again. A, as you mentioned, the solid ten. We ask every bowler for his goal. It's really interesting. The rabbits all say the same thing. I want to be exempt from the rabbit squad. I know. Uh, it does seem to be the goal that they write down there. Personally, I'd like to see some of them write you know, to win a title rather than just to become exempt mm -hmm. to kind of elevate that goal a little bit. Ringer's going to wind up with two something. Tilton's got a great game going. Mark Baker waiting in the wings. Oh! He waves at it. <laughs> Finishes with 209. Very respectable, clean game. Did a good job. Isn't going to be good enough. Tilton can go all the way for 279. Boy, if he'd have carried that 10 pin, we'd have had a little excitement. Mm. Jim Tilton averaged 220 this week. His 1985 average is 208. Has never won a title. Wants it desperately. Coming in pretty good. Oh, he leaves a solid 10. Well, that's what keeps us all honest in this game. Those ringing 10s. Picks up another ball to shoot cross lane at the 10 pin. Right now, he's just trying to keep a stroke for Mark Baker. Mark Baker was just crushing him in practice. We'll see how he do, does once he gets out here, but he was just crushing him in practice. Throws harder and straighter. Cross lane at the 10 pin. Has it. Jim Tilton is going to wind up with a 250-something. 258 with a strike. So he's assured himself of at least $5,000. And he's got his first win on television. First game that he's won. That, you know, makes you relax a little bit. You know, it's possible now. Boy, he's played the champ and he gets it. All right, 258, and the crowd appreciates it. Is Jimmy Tilton going to uh, be the champ? Well, next up for him is Mark Baker. 258 to 209. Tilton, our winner. He'll take on Mark Baker. That happens right after this message. Well, it was six in a row for uh, Jimmy Tilton, Mike, and this would have given him the seventh. There really wasn't a turning point in the match because he just uh, was the best. No, but he was 
thinking 300, you know, in the back of his mind until this particular shot. Got it way out to the channel at the time. Watch the second, six pin, second from the right, and it just flies right around the 10. And that's the old STP, the solid 10 pin, and that broke the string. We see the final score there, 258 to 209. Jim Tilton, if he can keep it going. Well, a respectable game. Boy, next week we're going to the Berthan Lanes in Waukegan, Illinois. It's the Hammer Open. We'll be coming at you live Wednesday, July 31st, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Your back's better? You're going to bowl? Oh, yes, I'm playing on bowling. There's nothing wrong with my back. It just got a little sore from driving 2,100 miles going back <laughs> home after last week. Mark Williams will defend his title. Be sure and join us once again July 31st. We'll be in Waukegan, Illinois at the Berthan Lanes. Right now, we're taking a look at Mark Baker. That is competitive. He really has something to prove, doesn't he, that uh, he can win on television because he's, he's cashing. He's making a lot of money. Well, he's, I was talking to him before, and he just is determined that he's taking the wrong mental approach to the television show, that he's been thinking too much of winning, and it's been too important. He says he's going to try and think of his own game and have a good time out there and, and hope that that makes him relax a little bit more and score better. But he better do it quick because Tilt is throwing strikes. Yes, he is. All right, Jimmy Tilton threw a 258 at Phil Ringner. Now he's got Mark Baker. That's right out. Oh, oh. Four pin. Actually, he got that ball wide of his target and hooked back too hard. So a little different start this time from Jim Tilton. Well, you can forget about the 300 game right away. He takes the pressure off there. Jim Tilton, very impressive in his opening match with Phil Ringner. Waiting in the wings. Dave Ferrero and Kevin Jr. Cross lane at the four pin and hits it on the left and makes it. So it'll be interesting to see how Baker starts out. In his other two appearances as a single player, Silver, he started out with opens right away. Very little time. Very little. He's way out there. Here he comes. And he gets that light hit. All right, so uh, the big twister, Mark Baker, and we had a chance to visit with him, and I asked him if he has a new superstition. Well, lately, uh, bowling on TV has been a superstition for me, but today, uh, I feel good. Uh, Soon later, we're going to break out of this slump, and uh, hopefully it's today. Well, if you can read lips, he said, I'm going to get over it. I'm not going to have any superstitions, and he started out pretty good with an ex by his name going for two in a row. come back. <laughs> Even he went, woo! <laughs> oh, he risked going in the gutter, but Mike, he was doing that all during warm-ups. Look at how he plays the air. Yeah, he got this ball wider than he wanted to. He got the little head. He's quick instead of slower like he normally is. He gets out oh. to the first board, and it comes roaring back. Head pin goes to the wall and does its job. That takes guts. Oh, I'd throw that one in the gutter. All right. Second frame, spare working for Till. Light, light, very light. Ooh, the two, oh, four, ten. Boy. Right out of the gate, he gets a bad break. On the first time he's missed the pocket, he gets a split. Jimmy Tilton, who was sensational, clean with that 258. In the position that he's in with Baker starting with double, he's got to go for the split. All right, tell him how you pick it up, Mike. He wants to try and hit the two pin on the left. He's shooting it somewhat from the left, but he wants to hit that two pin on the left and make it right over into the ten. It goes hard. Too much. Looks fine. Doesn't do it. So Jim Tilton in open going against Mark Baker, who has the double going. Let's see if Tilton can bounce back. How important is this mentally to come back and get a strike? Well, it's always important to come back and get a strike. Uh, but the position he's in, he's got to try and start getting working on a string of strikes because Baker is going to, I think, is going to throw some strikes in this game. Of course, you got to take them one at a time. And he leaves a solid 10 pin. David Ozio said something interesting last week. He said one of the things he thinks has improved his game is his ability to adjust at the foul line before going over and make that uh, last minute adjustment. Well, I never have been much of an advocate of that type of uh, thinking of bowling. My, my approach is more fundamental and geared to uh, repetition of shots. Uh, so I, it's really a foreign language to me when we're talking about foul line adjustments. Tilton picks up the spare. Now Mark Baker, who has earned $52,000 this year, 
a year ago, 90,000. He's only 24 years of age. Baker's problem, one of his problems is on television has been, has been rushing somewhat, just not the, he's a methodical player in his approach anyway. He doesn't take much time, but he's been rushing. Boy, does he start that wide. And the two eights, and he didn't get the lift that he wanted. He kind of just dumped the ball out there, and he gives it right, right. He had a chance to put Tilton away with that shot. He strikes twice there, and Jim Tilton is defeated almost. And he's going to have an open here unless he gets some kind of kiss or break. Two eight ten is almost an impossible split. Have you picked this up yourself? No, never have. I've seen it, but I've never made it myself. I don't leave it very right. <laughs> It's nine out. So a 2-4-10 split for Tilton, a 2-8-10 for Baker, and it cuts it back from a 28-pin lead to 10. Hey, that's what we were talking about, Wayne Webb, a few weeks ago, that killer instinct. At that position, that situation match, when you've got your opponent down, you've got to stomp on him. You just can't let him back into the match. He didn't like that release, and he leaves the 10. He was, Solid 10. He was surprised at the 10 pin. He said to himself as he came back, that's better, which it is. He just needs to relax and make these spares and uh, make the shots that his talent says that he's capable of. He's just not bowling up to his capabilities on television. Everybody on the tour knows how good Mark Baker is. <laughs> he jumps in, he's got a spare. Mark Baker, who was a good basketball player in high school, just went up and stuffed one. All right, we'll come back with more bowling, not basketball, right after this message. Our leading averages this year, as uh, we take a look at Wayne Webb, who is here. David Ozio has been a mark of consistency this year. Moving up all the time. Holman, who won it last year. Albie, the leading left-hander, fourth leading average. Weber at 212. Mark Baker on the show today at 212. We see Blake's going eight. up every week. Let me say number eight. Monticelli, because right. I butchered his name three <laughs> weeks ago. I apologize. And then uh, some of the other folks involved. Mark Roth, always in the top ten. And, uh, Who's some, number 11? Some, some guy. Let me try him. that name. <laughs> Slim. Tex Durbin, yeah, something like Durbin, that. Right. All right, the action here, though. Jimmy Tilton, down ten. Going against Mark Baker. He had a spare. But in the third, he's back in the game. He hasn't had a strike so far in three frames, and he's only down 10 pins. Stuck at the line. Oh, did he ever. Oh, Two, double ooh. wood. The 280 could have had the 2810 like Mark Baker did. Amazing that he got nine strikes that first match, never missed a pocket, and now he hasn't had a strike in four frames. See if we can pick it up, Mike. He was looking at his shoes when he came back. Watch it as he starts his slide. Right there, he starts to stick, and the ball goes left of target. He doesn't get the turn on it that he wants, and he's fortunate he didn't wind up with a 2 8 10. Still, as it is, he's got a tough spare. Fortunately, he doesn't wind up with a cartilage. I've seen a lot of people start like that on a football field and have surgery the next day. 2 8, double wood. Shot it off his strike line. Very nice cover. Well, that's interesting. Jimmy Tilton has looked very, very good, and we asked him before if he was more relaxed going into this week's action. Yes, I believe so. Last week was my first time on TV, and I was a little nervous, and it showed. This week, I've been relaxing all day, and I was sitting around the room today getting ready to bowl tonight, and I like my chances today. Tilton trying to get his first strike of the match on lane 19. Looks better. All right. Yeah, now he's in here. We have something going here. Tilton Baker, a couple of young guys. Meeting up here in Austin, Texas. No, Baker, though. If they add these two guys together, their ages together, they're still younger what are you than saying? I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Baker's got a spare going. Fifth uh, frame. Oh, 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 almost got a 7-10 in the pocket. But a pretty good shot leaves only the 10 pin. Baker having trouble getting a strike on lane 20. Four-year pro is making his sixth TV show of the year. Let's take a look at the end of this shot. See, the the seven. five pin went, just got the seven. The five nicked the seven. The six didn't get the ten. No time, and he comes back and throws at the ten. Takes a little time to do it. He says, all right, he's got a spare. <laughs> got two spares in a row. <laughs> Bart, Mark, try to bark. Mark, as we see the score sheet there, 74 to 63. The difference, 11 pins right now mentioned basketball. He was a McDonald's High School All-American as a senior in Garden Grove. Asked him 
as he was warming up, if he still plays, says that every year in Peoria, they get together and they go shoot some hoops. Still likes the game, says he can score, can't guard anybody. A little more relaxed on that shot. Oh, uh, another ten foul, a third in a row. Now he's hooked up with Tilton pretty good now. Um, Tilton had a strike in the fifth, so Tilton, when he gets up, can take the lead in the match. He can even it and then take the lead with his two turns. Cross lane at the tenth. Needs to make this to keep himself. Oh, she just hung on and made it. And we've seen Mark miss the ten pin. Uh, the TV four pin, the two pin. We've seen him do nothing but struggle, and he's not uh, not doing as well here as I thought he would. In practice, he was just throwing one strike after another. Jim Tilton can earn more tonight than he has in the, in his entire 1985 year. He's earned thirteen thousand dollars. Sixteen is top prize here in Austin. Trying for a double on lane twenty. Stuck the last time. Then stick this time. And he's high. Boy, light twice in a row, now goes high. Leaves a 6-10. And both players struggling with lane 20. These guys are good friends. Tilton's nickname is Two-Tone because uh, of the way he wore his hair for a while, and Baker gave him the nickname. Tilton's from Huntington Beach, California. I spent a lot of time in my Huntington Beach. Cross lane at the 6-10. Oh, just gets it. He was kicking and shaking all the way. I can't afford an open right now. Yeah. Ten pins exactly. He likes the body surf. You ever been body surf? Yeah. I don't blame him. He likes all the beach activities. Let's let's go tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I'd love to. <laughs> going to Florida to do some PKA. I'm gonna hit it. We were we were at the beach a couple weeks ago and I went out in the water. I couldn't get my wife in past her knees. So. <laughs> all right, spare going seventh round. Coming in. Yep. He's got lane 19. Oh uh, boy, does he? So Tilton is down 10. Baker will have his chance in the seventh frame when we return. Mark Baker leads it by 10. Seventh frame action. Spare going. Mark Baker is another young bowler that likes to spend a lot of time at the beach as we see his career earnings there at 229000 52,000 so far this year. He'd like to add 16 to that today. The light. Got that 10 out of there this time. Now let's see if he can take advantage of it by getting a strike on the lane he likes better, number 19. Let's take a look at the uh, light ball. Let's look at the arm, check out the form, and let you describe it here, Mike. Mark Baker, big, strong young man. He takes that first step. Now on the second step, he pushes that arm out and locks it in right there. Still controls the swing all the way through. Very strong, uses that strength, lifts hard this time, knows it's in the pocket, and knocks the 10 out for a strike. Covers a lot of boards. <laughs> sure does. His biggest asset is his strength, and that's what he uses. He can't overpower the lane condition. Let's see if he can double up here in the eighth. He's there. Yeah. All right, nice shot. Beautiful. That's the Mark Baker we've been watching all summer that our folks at home in ESPN land have not been able to see. Some pressure now on Tilton. He's down 20. Eighth frame. He does have a strike going. Tilton has to strike here to keep himself in the match. Has not hit the pocket on lane 20 this game. In between, during our commercial, he went up and checked the approach on this one. It's high. Well, high. 310. He just has lost lane 20 entirely. Had a problem, as you mentioned, with his his approach, he was checking his shoes, he went through some practice movement here, much like a golfer, without the club in his hand. How do you pick this one up? Cross lane, he wants to hit the three pin on the right and have the ball deflect from Karen off into the tent. He just misses it. And that could be the one that does it for Mark Baker. Second split, or second open, I beg your pardon, Tilton. It's just amazing how it goes in this sport of bowling. You can be so good one game, and you're back on the same pair of lanes. You just bowl 250 on, and he's not going to bowl 200 this game. Yeah. Still has a chance in this match, remote as it is, but he's got to strike out. He's still potential 191. He's got to have something to work on here. He's Coming there again. Beautiful. There's no trouble with 19. Does need some help, though, from Mark Baker. I mean, the last time he had an open, Baker had a 2-8-10 split. 
And Baker just came over and looked at Harry Golden's score sheet to see what he has to do. Basically, what he has to do is stay clean the last two frames. If he opens, he could still give Tilton a chance. Leads it by 32. Will he play a more conservative shot? No. What he wants to do is win here in the ninth frame. And slides it over and does not get the 10. Well, that pin was coming at it. I don't know what pin it was, but it was flying at that head, at the 10 pin. Still all right if he marks. He's got to make the 10 pin. Tilton has two splits after throwing a 258 at Philip, at Philip Ringner. And has a 10 pin. No problem. We make four of them this game already. Let's take a look at the reaction at first ball. Oh. He thinks he's going to go. Oh. Let me give him a left hook there. What he needs now in the 10th frame here is some kind of, of spare strike to lock it up. If he would open, that would give Tilton a chance to strike out and win. This has been his good play in lane 19. And oh, look at this. And we he have use a swishing 7-10, and Tilton definitely has a chance. Because he's just not going to make, what he'll do is he'll just throw hard in one of them, hope it bounces around. And he's going to wind up with 189. Tilton can strike out for 191. It was not his fault. He threw it right in the pocket and got a split. I mean, it's just, there's nothing you can do about that. So what you're saying, Mike, Tilton controls his own destiny. He needs three in a row. He needs two and nine is what he needs. He should have got nine on one of those pins. He gives it the okay sign, which means it's not okay. 188, Tilton needs two strikes and eight pins to win this match. He's not hit the pocket on lane 20 as Mark Baker tosses his towel in the air. Keep him, this in mind, Jim Tilton had six in a row against Ringer. Nine strikes all told. All he needs is just two and nine, as Mike mentioned. Let's see what kind of adjustment he makes on lane 20. What kind of pressure bowler he is. Gives it more room, and it's not making it. Leaves the two pin, and Mark Baker's the winner, and he puts his head in his towel and says, Phew. He really dodged a bullet. Yes, he did, definitely. Really dodged a bullet. Mark Baker will advance. At the two pin, he never hit the pocket on lane 20. Amazing. He never missed it the first game and never got close in the second game. Somehow, Mark Baker survived two opens. Well, Mark Baker's going to go on to face Dave Ferraro, and uh, they're already playing taps for my pick. Now he goes high. It's either light or high. He could not get the ball in the pocket on that one. Winds up with a 169. Jimmy Tilton earns himself $5,000. Mark Baker moves on. He'll take on Dave Ferraro. So our next match, as you see the reaction to Baker coming up, we've got some bowling tips from a main man, Mike Durbin. Don't you dare touch it. This was the turning point because Tilton had a shot, Mike. He could have even the match if he just struck in the next two frames here. He goes high, leaves the 310, and he put himself way behind. This is the eighth frame of the match, right over about the sixth or seventh board. It looks good now, but it breaks right here, the 310, and he didn't convert it. Just was unable to master lane 20. Actually, all through the match, the 10th frame could have been a key shot, too, because he still could have struck out one, but he just could not master lane 20. Well, we've got some action coming up. We'll go to Waukegan, Illinois. Mark Williams defends his championship there. The hammer open. That's at Bertrand Lanes. Bertrand Lanes, exactly right. $120,000, so it's up a little bit from the purse tonight. And then we move it up a little more as we're moving on to Windsor, Ontario. $125,000 Molson. And Pete Weber, who's a defending champ here, was the defending champ there also. Yeah, so... Uh, Did he win them all last night or last <laughs> summer? Pete had a pretty good year last <laughs> summer, didn't he? That happens August 7th. And then we're going to move up to Buffalo. George Pappas will defend his greater Buffalo Open title. And we'll say hello to the general down there in Charlotte, North Carolina. There we say, go. George, we miss you out here. That's right, George. We're looking forward to seeing you defend that title. And then the uh, fourth one, the last one, the Columbia Seniors Touring Pro doubles. And that should be interesting because we'll... Uh We'll see some other folks. Obviously, that's not our last one. We go clear through the month of August. But our last one that we're looking at 
in this particular setup. So we got a big, uh, big month coming up. Bowling tips, what do you got coming up for us, Mike? The bowling tip this week is going to be on the free arm swing, so we'll see what uh, Slim Durbin has to say about it. Away. This time, we're going to look at gravity and the free swing. Now, the key thing to keep in mind as I complete my push away is I want to let that ball fall freely. It should look something like this. I've got the ball here. Again, I go through my setup routine, move the ball to the right, and I push it out, imagining that table out there that I'm trying to put it at. And I put it out here, and the left hand still has control at this point, and here I let it fall. And gravity wants to pull it right down. Now the trouble is, though, that most of us don't want to let it fall freely at this point. What most of us want to do, myself included, is put some kind of control in it right here. And we control the swing down in one fashion or another. Some muscle, a little muscle, or with some players a lot of muscle what the muscle does is it forces me to match my arm swing with the foot speed it's a controlled motion all the way through however gravity on the other hand if i push this thing out and let it fall gravity will tell that ball to fall down freely gravity will tell my feet just how fast to go and gravity will tell me when i want to let go of that bowling ball so gravity, I feel, is a superior way. What you might want to think of at this point is simply a simple way is ball, fall. Two simple words, ball, fall. Now, what happens with my left hand as I get to this ball, fall? Well, the left hand wants to gently come out toward the wall. What this does is it squares up my shoulders. Now my ball is in line with my target. My shoulders aren't open or contorted in any way. I'm squared up. And I've got that left hand pointing right out here for the wall as a counterbalance. So you might want to add another word, and we go ball, fall, wall. Simple little formula right there. Now, the last point here, as far as this free swing, we get into the second step of the approach, is I go ball, fall, wall. That ball should be right alongside my right leg at this point in the second step of my approach. In conclusion, gravity may be the most important word in the sport of bowling. It is certainly the most overlooked word. But just keep in mind, when you get to the end of that pushway, you simply think ball, fall. Next week, we're going to talk about timing and the third step. Well, you inspired me. Let's see what happens here, because Mark Baker now advances. He'll take on Dave Ferraro. That happens right after this message on ESPN. Mike, the whole idea is to cash, and here's some other folks who picked up a check this week. And Bill Peters near where I live there, just missed this week. Jimmy Certain, old friend of mine, Tom Kreitz, we've seen on the show before. Our Firestone champ, Mark Williams. Hey, hey, Alan Grant of Palisade, let's get those Colorado guys yes. in there. Skidmore won this tournament before. Our Lawrence from Austin, Texas, and Pete Weber is the defending champion here. Don Janello holding up the pack there from Merrick, New York. Got to pay those bills. Here's the money that is involved this week. We've already decided fifth place. Ringner picked up $4,000. Tilton's picked up five. And, of course, what they're all shooting for is the $16,000 first prize. Will it be Guppy Troop? Will it be Dave Ferraro or Mark Baker? Because those are the three that are left. Dave Ferraro, interesting guy. Our first look at him this year. And you talk about tradition and, and something that means something across your shirt and everything. His family has been involved in bowling forever. Granddad could bowl. His dad was a good bowler. And now here's uh, Dave carrying on. His brother was a good bowler. Well, still is. I see it runs in families, you know. Nelson Burton Jr. and his father, Nelson Burton Sr., both ABC Hall of Fame members. So. Mark Baker had a 188 last game. And he leaves the 
almost boy, seven. Almost had the ten up there with it again. He says, all right, he's only the seven. Let me ask you, uh, Elaine, this question. The solid ten versus the weak ten, why don't you explain that? The solid ten is where the six pin just whistles around that ten. It's just, as we say, very, very solid. The weak ten is where the six pin lays in the channel and doesn't get up to get the ten. And then he makes the spare. Yeah, he was sweating that one. He looks back at me and smiles. He's trying to stay loose. He really is because you know it's tough. He's got to whip it. Tom Watson was that way for a while in golf. You've got yeah, to whip remember, it on TV. I, I remember when Watson was that way. He sure did whip it too, didn't he? Yeah. Dave Ferraro, interesting guy. What a nice start. He's an instinct player. I watched him last night. We'll go up those boards. Take a look at him and let you break it down, Mike. Five very quick steps here. Watch his left arm come out there for balance. Pushes off on that fourth step there. Comes right straight to the ball. Not much of a slide, but a good follow through. Rather stiff legged at the end. I think he'd do better if he'd stay down a little better at the line. It's interesting. He says he goes straight, but he would really like to do both. He, in other words, he'd like to twist and be good. Well, we'd all like to twist, especially <laughs> all the <his> straight shooters <laughs> as he doubles up there. <laughs> we're, all <laughs> coming, we're all covetous of those big hook bowlers, I'll tell you. And here is a guy who can hook it pretty good, Mark Baker. He's got that personal drive. He's been bowling since the age of nine. Bill Julian taught him, and he taught him well. Let's see if he can pick up a strike here. Lane 20. Rude. Went a little high, and he looks at it. He thought it was going to be solid. He tripped the forward. He says, all right. But I'll tell you right, he's confused right now. That was a fortunate break for him because that was not a good ball looking at him he didn't he's still shaking his head well he got a funny reaction on the lane remember tilton lost lane 20 entirely there's got to be a reason you got two straight shooters number one and number two this condition must have been somewhat in their favor all week all right let's see if uh, baker can double up in the third trying to even the match back in the pocket yeah gets that 10 pin out of there yep looks smacks, good with the double smacks the hands together if the name Ferraro, for you sports fans, sounds familiar, his cousin Mike Ferraro was the coach who uh, handled third base as we get a re-rack here from the New York Yankees when Dick Hauser was coaching. Remember when Ferraro waved a guy around third and ended up in a big controversy? Yeah, his time runner got short. Yeah. <laughs> he moved on to manage KC, Hauser, or to uh, manage Cleveland, I should say, Hauser, of course, in Kansas. Trying for three in a row. Solid. Well, he's, he's, uh, he told me he had what is called hold area. That the ball would hold pocket for him. He well, certainly did that. As we mentioned, bowling really is a family tradition. And Dave commented about that earlier tonight. Well, uh, my family's been in a bowling business for 45 to 50 years. My grandfather was a great bowler in Hudson Valley. My father was a bowler. My brother's a PBA bowler, and I uh, grew up in a bowling alley for the last 24 years. I've been bowling since I've been two. See, all we got to do to teach him on that is stay bowling center instead of bowling out. Trying for four road, he's right oh, there. He's got it. Oh, David Ferraro is perfect. Can he pick up $25,000? You saw that uh, reaction from Mark Baker. Let's come back and find out what Baker can do. He's down 20. Ferraro is hot. During the commercial there, Mark Baker was waving Guppy Troop to come over as we see the past winners of this event. Last year's champ is Pete Weber. And Marshall Holman won in 83. Skidmore won his first title here in 1982. And in 1981, Dave Sutar defeated Marshall Holman. Mark Baker averaged 222 this week. His average this year is 212. And when he bowled Dave Ferraro earlier in the week in the match play, Ferraro shot 290 at him. He tries for three in a row and has it. Oh, a turkey for Baker. Keeps himself right in the match. He looks back and says, what up? <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely trying to stay loose, I'll tell you what. And he's doing a pretty good job of it. Well, he's clean. His problem is Ferraro is perfect through four. Fifth he, frame action. He can even the match with one more right here. This tournament high game this week, 279. He may have to shoot that to win today. Trying for four. He's there. Knocks oh. that 10 out of there. You can see him loosen up. He's getting more confidence. Ferraro better keep striking. And Ferraro asked for another re his second one on lane 20. 
What's interesting, Ferraro has not had a 300 game this year. He's only had one in his PBA career. Wouldn't it be something if to you got get it, it here? 25, 000, yeah. You know, we were talking a little bit about his family, and it's interesting. We just had the, the promo for horse racing. His father, Jack, is a harness driver at Saratoga. Nice little family ties. Gets it out of the lane. It's there again. Yes, it is. Strikes again. Did you see that messenger pin just in case that pin is hanging around? Whoa. Five in a row. The best we've had tonight, six in a row by Jim Tilton. And, and Mark Baker's sitting right behind it, and he's watching. Watch the ball hold pocket. It's just this is what we call the frozen roll. And that two pin just got the seven, and it was going over. would have got that ten pin. Trying for six in a row with one more here. Up by ten, can increase it to 20. But he better keep striking. For our roll to 290 at Baker during match play. He's there again. Oh, it sure is. Boy, oh. every one of them dead flush. Zoned in six in a row. He's halfway home for 25 big ones. Well, right now, he's just thinking about winning the game. 25,000 or the 300 game is really not entering his mind because Mark Baker is keeping right up with him. Baker is not too shabby with the four in a row going for five, six frame. And it's there. Boy, did that come back. He didn't like it. He says, but I'm going to take it. Five in a row for Baker. But the Ferraro was six in a row. What's your reaction? And he's talking to everybody now. He didn't like it. He likes it now. Oh, boy. Taking his first re rack on lane 19. Even the match he came with one more. Tell you what, Ferraro better keep striking. Ferraro right now has, a, what is it, 11 and 6. He's got 17 in a row against Baker. 290 and Baker possible 300. That's cold-blooded. He's out. This friend there, everybody's trying to survive. All right, let's see. He's up to it. And he's there. What a match we've got going. Baker has six in a row. Ferraro has six in a row. Only problem is... Ferraro is bowling in the seventh now. He's still perfect. And Ferraro has asked for his third rerun on lane 20. Ferraro, if, if one of the lanes is going to give him trouble, it's my <laughs> humble opinion that it's going to be this lane, lane 20. First TV appearance of the year, second of his career, and his only other championship round appearance, he finished fifth in the 1980 Long Island Open. He qualified fourth, lost that opening match on his goal. Trying for seven in a row. He's right there. Boy, oh, yeah. just solid. Look at the background. Look at the shot there. His missus likes it. She Gloria. Sure does. I'll tell you what. Gloria's watched Dave roll seven in a row at Mark Baker. Going for number eight. I don't think we've ever had a match on TV 300 to 290. You know, that's the potential here. And the pressure mounts. Ferraro trying for number eight. Something went wrong. He did just the right thing. Back off and start over. One 300 game in his career. Will he get number two tonight? That heart is pounding right now. I'm telling you, Irv, the man is nervous. But he's rising to the occasion. Well on the lane again. Oh, he's there. Yes, Knocks again. that 10 out of there. Oh, they're going wild here. We're in Austin, Texas, and it's not hook em horns right here. I mean, it's all for the guy from Kingston, New York. He's captured him. Look at this. This one hits sort of half pocket. Watch the six pin. Second on the right. Snaps that 10 right out of there. And Baker's upset about something. I don't know what he's upset about. I don't know what has happened. I don't know whether he thinks that that Ferraro got an extra re-rack or something, but he is upset. He's throwing the towel down. I have no clue to what he's mad about, but he's shaking his head. It's a bad mental frame to get up with. I'm telling you, he's still in this match. Very much so. He has six in a row. Eighth frame. He's down 20. Boy, he is... Uh... He's trying to regain his composure, get his mind on what he's doing. He's got to get his mind on what he's doing. Whatever it is that's upsetting, he's got to set it behind him right now and say, hey, I can't do anything about that. I've got to knock down 10 pins right here. He's averaged 223 this week. Light. And gets it. Seven in a row for Baker. 
best match we've had this year. Absolutely. I mean, they don't get much better than this one. I'll tell you what, the folks at home, look at that scoreboard. All X's except the first frame. And right now, I tell you what, the folks at home, if they don't like this, they might as well turn off the television set because it doesn't get any better. Well, that's right, and all, this, all the other ones are reruns. <laughs> <laughs> Ninth frame. He's got to have this one to even the match. Set himself up for a potential 290. And he's there. Oh, and knocks that beautiful. 10 out of there. Oh, that's the Mark Baker we've been seeing week after week after week. Dave Farrell comes out, and he's perfect through eight frames, and he finds himself even in the match. If he doesn't strike now, in fact, he falls behind. But the way it's he's a cruel hitting, world, Mike. The way he's hitting lane 19, this is the big shot right now. If he can hit lane 20 one more time, as he collects his thoughts and tries to get his emotions under control, he is perfect through a ninth frame. Seven. Boy, he could have used at least nine on that shot. Right in the pocket. Well, they appreciate the effort down here. Let's look at his reaction. Eight in a row. He knows it's a little high. See him grimace there? Oh. Four seven is what he needs to pick up. And you would think when you roll eight in a row with somebody that you haven't knocked. Uh-uh. Stick around, folks. We haven't decided a thing. He needs to pick up the four seven. Absolutely. He can't get can't get careless on this bear. He's stuck. We made it. Yep. All right, so he's clean. Both bowlers have only the one spare to show for their effort. He's tonight. potential 278. He's amazing. He's got eight in a row in a spare, and he's down two pins. You really got to give Baker credit for hanging in there. It's been easy to fold when he oh, was absolutely. bringing them up. All right, let's see if he can get it going again. He needs perfect through eight. He needs to get this first one. Coming in. They yeah, got it. They got it. That makes Baker strike somewhere. Mike, if it should come up if we tie, how do they handle it? Two frame roll off, ninth and tenth frame. And if they tie it again, we'd go again. That's happened before. Right now, he's with a spare. He'd finish at 268. If he strikes again, it puts him in the 270s. I said that Mark Baker's high game this week was 279, and he might need to shoot that to win. That's entirely possible. Put him in the 270s. And gets oh, it. it. Does it. Ferraro's just bowled as well as you can bowl. You can't do any better than he's been doing. One solid 4-7. Eight in a row and could not shake Mark Baker. If he strikes on Amazing. this ball, he forces Baker to get the first strike in the tenth, nine and a spare to win. He's got to have all ten to keep the pressure on Baker. And this is not a team game, folks. Nobody helps you. And he's there one more Eight time. Is. Eleven out of twelve strikes, and he can lose. 278 for Dave Ferraro. Eleven of twelve, as Mike mentioned. And all he can do is sit back and watch. Actually, Mark Baker, if he gets one more, you know, could have nine strikes and win. Nine strikes could defeat 11, but he has to have this one. No time again. He's there. Oh, pretty shot. Now he, needs, now he needs nine and a spare. If he gets eight and a spare or nine and he would miss it, we would have a tie. Do you know if Dave Ferraro loses this match, it'll be the highest score ever recorded in a losing situation? I remember Dick Ricker shooting 268 and losing at the Tournament of Champions, but never a 278. He starts over again. The ball didn't feel right. He's got to get nine pins, and we know that Mark Baker can send it to no man's land sometimes and wind up with less than nine. to convert this. He leaves a 10 pin. If he makes it, it'll be 279, equally in his high game of the week, and he'd win by one pin, 279 to 278, and Dave Ferraro's got to feel like the orphan of the tour. This is no gimme, Mike. He's had problems. If he misses it, we have a tie and a two-frame roll-off. And he missed it. Oh, he just got it. And he just 
Oh, my God. I thought he had missed it. Dave Farrar was sensational. He goes up and he shakes Mark Baker's hand. It doesn't get any better, folks. 279 to 278. And that pin pin looked like a miss. They're applauding. They're standing here. Well, they something? showed what an effort like that. I mean, look at the last shot because I really felt he missed it too much. I thought he had, it snuck by. He kind of dumps the ball out here, goes left of the fourth arrow, and at this point, I thought it was going to hook by it. And it just hangs on, and it's a good thing it was a wide ball and a wide pin. Extra coat of paint on that pin. Guppy Troop is looking on, and he says, am I going to have to bowl this guy? Well, we'll find out. He is for sure going to have to bowl him. That happens for the championship in $16,000 right after this message. Well, this man threw 9 of 11 strikes. Dave Ferraro, 11 of 12, and Baker the winner by one. And there you see the score, and it just shows that the guy that gets the most strikes doesn't always win. Ferraro, perfect, except for the ninth frame where he got eight on a perfect pocket hit. Baker, nine in a row, wins it 279 to 278. Guppy Troop is warming up. He's ready to go. We'll have the championship. Troop and Baker, that's coming up. Don't you dare touch it. Guppy Troop walked up. He's going to practice while as we get a look at his footwear. And his words were, you want to bowl this guy? I don't want any part of him. <laughs> he didn't want any part of either one of them when they were shooting, you know. And poor Dave Ferraro. I put the kiss of death on him by picking him, you know. And he shoots the highest losing score in the history of the PBA. You know? It was amazing. 11 of 12 strikes, folks. And lose. Mark Baker just barely gets a 10 pin down. Can he convert that into $16,000 in a championship? Guppy Troop does have some killer instinct. Oh, Guppy Troop, if he can come out striking, he gets so animated and he gets so excited, but he responds. He's able to get excited and throw the strikes and yet calm himself down in between so that he's calm when he's throwing the shot. He's amazing when he gets it going. He's uh, like the little girl with a curl in the middle of her forehead. He's good. He's very, very good, but when he's bad, he's horrid. All right, we had a chance to talk to Guppy. He had 10 strikes last week, and I asked him, would you settle for 10 right now and mail it in? Oh, I'd settle for 10 strikes on television anytime. I shot 233 last week, had 10 strikes. David only had nine. I'll take 233 and go home right now. Mike, I have a question for you about the emotional part of it. Now, Guppy Troop by far was a people's choice when Harry Golden introduced the five bowlers. I saw the crowd really get involved with Ferraro and Baker. Do you have a feel for this? You know, Troop is colorful. He wears the colorful pants. People get behind him. Is that going to change because of what Baker did? The fans can be very fickle. It may change uh, just that quickly, you know, uh, because you have to admire such a tremendous effort that Baker made to defeat a man in the bowl 278 and win when you've been struggling on television. It just gives us a picture of how good Mark Baker is and what the PBA pros have been watching every week. Tell you something else interesting. I have felt since I started doing this series that it's a disadvantage to be uh, in the catbird seat because you do sit down a long time. And yet Baker, as we get the handshake and they're ready to go, Baker had so much taken out of him emotionally. I watched him after he sat down and he looked drained. It depends how quickly he can recover. He, he did a smart thing. He went over and practiced in between. He, threw, he gets some shots on the adjacent lane. I remember I threw a very emotional shot in 1979 to, to beat, defeat Mark Roth, and I was emotionally drained. I went over and threw some practice shots, and I regained it. So we'll see if he can. Guppy Troop. Starting on the left lane. Solid 10 right out of the gate. Ready shot right out of the gate. Let me caution the viewer. Don't turn away. Neither bowler takes very much time. No, they're very quick players, both of them. Got be switching to a hard plastic ball, cross lane at the 10 pit. No mistakes. And has it. it's interesting. Last night when Baker and Troop hooked up, Troop looked like he was going to resign himself to second spot, and Baker came up and gave him a little bit of a jab and said, "You don't even look like you're trying. That you've given up." It seemed to rejuvenate him, and he came back to win the first qualifying spot over Ferraro. And he defeated Baker in that match. Baker starting with a solid 10, so there's no 300 for either bowler. Right out of the gate, both players starting with solid 10s. 6 Baker. TV show for Mark Baker this year. 
and he's going to make a lot more. This young man has got a wealth of talent. This is the one that gave him the win. Over he says six. He's made six in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I like his personality. Uh, he's really trying to stay loose. And I can't tell from the first it. reaction what the crowd really thinks because Guppy is colorful. He's got that charisma and he milks the crowd. He knows what he's doing. Mark Baker getting to finish on the lane that he likes better, lane 19. He really gives this one room and here it comes. Oh! Almost had the 7-10, and a pin came across to try to get the 10. was a little short. And that's exactly right, because he was worried about the 7-10, and then he thought he could get it all. Right. Sure. Let's look at the reaction. He's saying, come on, strike. Now he's looking and thinking, oh, no, not a split. Oh. Trying for his 7th, 10th pin in a row. And has it. Says so this is getting automatic now. He looks over to his tutor, Mike Durbin. Guppy comes up and checks the approach now on lane 20. And we might mention, Irv, at this time, that uh, Guppy's father is ill right now, and Guppy is more or less kind of, you know, trying to bowl this game for his father, who's not feeling very well right now. We'd like to wish his father the best and hope he gets well soon. Absolutely. Smooth release. Yep. Oh. Ball hitting what we call soft. I mean, it's just not hitting the pins hard. And uh, 10 pin and a swish and seven. Mike, it's interesting because his bowling goal is to win the Firestone Tournament of Champions. You've won it three times, and it's got to be a great feeling. Well, I've always considered the Tournament of Champions to be the Super Bowl bowling as he sticks and almost goes over the line. Wow, you talk about the cartilage trouble pull. Boy, he stuck so hard. Uh, all right, let's take a look. We've got it from the side because this is crucial. Watch he almost goes over the line, Watch Mike. Watch how quick his steps are, especially the next to last step. is very short right here, and then he sticks right here. And usually he keeps on sliding, and he just stopped. Wow, he took that hop a la Harry Smith years ago and almost went over the line. You know, he broke a leg once, slipped on the ice in Peoria, right? Mark Baker said something interesting to Chuck Pisano and Harry Golden about that lane. Maybe that's what was upsetting him in the Ferraro match. Nice shot. Ooh, no, the 210. Got me in trouble right away. Just must not got a lift on that ball. I thought he'd let it go pretty. He's got to give it an effort. Got to try and convert this split to put some pressure on Baker. He has seven titles. Won his first in the 1978 Kessler Open in Battle Creek, Michigan. Beat Dick Weber. He's going for it. Too much? Yeah, just by. An open. Got the... We just don't see that flam. I mean, he hasn't able to get anything going to show that flamboyant style that he has and that aggressive nature. Baker's left two ten pins. See if he can get that ten pin out of there. He's there. Oh, oh, it just snapped at the end, and he leaves the. Let me see what he's got here. He's got the three, four, six, seven, ten. Do you have a shot at this at all? Yes. What you want to do is move cross lane, hit the three pin on the right. The ball will take out the six and the ten and knock that three pin over into the 4-7. Cuppy Troop, meanwhile, takes his glasses off, shakes his head and says, I have a life. Hey, look at this. He gave it a go. Just didn't hit it thin enough, and he opens the door, had a chance to put some pressure on him. He has 42 in the third, so it's 45 to 42. And basically, we threw so many strikes in the last game. We've already got two opens and no strikes, and they've thrown six frames in between the two of them. All right, so you need to regroup. Baker's down three. Guppy Troop isn't very happy, even though he leads. He did not like the ball that he threw. He slipped in the second frame, was fortunate in picking up the spare. Baker trying to get back on track. Oh my goodness, that seven will not fall. Somebody over the audience says, you got to be kidding me. And Mark Baker says, yeah, you're right. He comes in light. We're not going to see it real well here. The five pin, ten pin, almost to the five pin, hits it. Hits the seven, and it rocks, but it doesn't fall. He's been good on spares tonight. One more time. And it picks up the seven. So Baker is down three. Troop will get his chance. Fourth frame action coming up from Austin at stake. $16,000.
Well, here's what we're shooting for. The winner picks up 16, and the loser, if you want to call it that, $8,200 here tonight. We've already decided third place, Ferraro, and what an amazing performance, Mike. 11 of 12, and uh, still winds up in third place. Tilton picked up $5,000, Ringner $4,000. We keep it going next week. We'll be in Waukegan, Illinois, for the hammer open. And it's interesting, Mark Williams was going to give it up. And now he's already won in excess of $100,000 this year. He will defend his title. Won his uh, first title there last year. Defeated his good friend Pete McCordick in order to win that. But uh, see if he can defend next week. Well, once again, be sure and join us. That's next Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Right here, Guppy Troop leads by three. Open in the third, fourth frame. Guppy trying for the first strike of the match and gets it. Oh, you heard somebody in the background ten times. Guppy passed us the note. Tell Lee and Jenny Levenis that they can buy the crib now. He's talking about his lawyer and backer from Columbia, South Carolina. Let's look at his reaction. And this is the animated Guppy troop we've been talking about. And he's got it. And what he what he was talking about in the note he passed us as we get a look at Baker is um, apparently Lee and Jenny have a little child. He says, now you can buy it. I'm going to make you some money. Let's see if you can get a double here. Up by three, trying to make it 13. Light again. Knocks out the five. Leaves, oh, or knocks out the two, four. Leaves only the five, eight. Relatively easy spare, but nobody's getting any strikes. Interesting, last game we had 20 strikes between the two bowlers. So far we've had one. <laughs> Guppy was second after round one and then led the entire week after that. As the spare. Both bowlers were open in the third, and Baker, who's down three, has a spare going. Fifth, fifth frame. He had eight in a row. Nine of 11. Nine in a row that last game. Nine in a row. Let me correct myself. Guppy doesn't watch while uh, his competitor's going at it. Is that superstition? Or? It could be a little bit of that, or just if he gets a lucky strike, he doesn't want to see it. He wants to concentrate on his own game. Sometimes they, you know, their for television, they sneak a peek. There's the first strike for Baker. <laughs> and he picks it up. Get a kick out of Guppy. Used to referee college basketball for a guy named Don Haskins, who's won a national title down at UTEP. He would never look, and then he'd yell at the referees, and I'd always tell him, you can only yell half the time because you don't watch. <laughs> and he's quite a coach, quite a competitor. Baker trying to take the lead the double. Both had opens in the third frame. Looking for our first double of the championship match. Is it? Oh, didn't quite get the lift that he wanted. He's counting the tempins. I think he said that's eight. You gotta remember that Baker's only title last year, he came from the third position all the way through, defeated three opponents to win it in Miami, Florida. Cross made at the 10 pin. One more time. Yes. This has really been interesting tonight because Jim Tilton had six in a row in the first match and beat Phil Ringer. And then he lost to Mark Baker in the second match. And he had a chance. He had a chance to do something. And it just didn't work out. He had a 7-10 split. And then Baker threw a 279. And he needed every bit of it. Ferraro with a 278. And here they are. Troop and Baker. Troop leads by three. Troop trying for his second strike of the game. That is it. Where's the reaction from Jackie? Well, he's waiting until he gets a double. If he gets a double, he can see the reaction. I never have been an advocate of using up a lot of emotion on that first strike. Once you get the double, yeah, but if you use up all that emotion on the first strike, you can't get your concentration together for that second one. Guppy right now is using all of his experience, trying to pace himself, get his heart beat under control right now so that he can make the shot that he wants to make here. You know, it's going so hot and heavy that last match, I expected to see the crowd doing the wave <laughs> because it got dead. There's excited. a little bit of a letdown for this match, but it's still a tight match, three pins. Guppy trying for a double. Coming in. Nope. And he just can't get it up the hill on lane 19. He just keeps coming up light, light. He told me in the practice, that 19 was tighter for him. And he's the only one of the players that has picked a finish on lane 20. Now he's switching balls again. He's going to use the ball that goes straighter at the 2-5, which is not an easy spare. And he's shooting it from the left. 
He's going to throw hard and straight right at that two pin. Seventh frame. Ooh. Oh, has it. No problem. Boy, what a horse race we've got going here in Austin. Baker is down by three to get his opportunity in the seventh frame when we return. Well, what's going through these two gentlemen's minds? Uh, Baker saying, am I going to get my second title? Guppy Troop saying, am I going to get my eighth? Right now, I think that they're not thinking that far ahead. They're trying to think one shot at a time, Irv, to just find a way to get a double and stay clean, and maybe that'll win the match. Baker trying for his second strike of the game on lane 20. He's light, doesn't get it, gets nine, though. Struggling on lane 20. He wipes his thumb on his pants like, like just a little perspiration is picked up or something from the heat of the lights and causing him to sweat. A little thing like that can just affect the feel of that ball. So emotional against Ferraro. You just wonder how much it takes out of you. Oh, is no, he, he get missed it. He, he did it again. Oh. He missed that in Dublin. He missed a two pin. And he's just handed it to, to Troop on a silver platter. He's done 25 pins now. Misses the deuce after he had an open in the third. Actually, it's not 25. He's down 15 pins. Look at the reaction because he'd been good tonight with his spares. And he goes, oh, no, he knew he missed it as soon as he let it go. He's got to come back with a strike. He's got to put something together. He's eighth frame. It's late. He's got to get going. And he's, and he's got, a, got the three, six, seven, ten. I mean, a potential another open, 279. Ferraro has to be sitting like feeling like an orphan. I mean, Tilton and Baker don't bowl 200, and Troop and Baker here now are, are struggling in the championship match, and he bowls 278 and loses. It was interesting watching Guppy Troop's reaction. It was like he had just lost. He threw the towel up in the air. He doesn't like it that way. He wants to win it. He has a chance. Give him to him. Well, it's been handed to him right here, I'll tell you. Three opens for Mark Baker, and he is down 15. All Troop needs to do well, he's, is He bowl. was down 15 before that. No, he's down 26, I beg your pardon. Troop definitely has that killer instinct. He's looking right now to put his opponent away and put him out of his misery. Eighth frame, spare going for Guppy Troop. Right now Guppy is going in a 185 pace as he leaves a solid 10, and the best Mark Baker can do is 179. So Guppy has every possibility of bowling under 200 and winning this match easily. Cross lane at the 10 pin. Ooh. He almost lost his footing. He is fortunate. Well, I'll tell you what, it's uh, here you take it. No, I don't want it right now. I put thanks some people who make our job so much easier. Chuck Pisano who knows as much about bowling as anybody I've ever been around. Our TV coordinator, Phil Ferguson, John Campus, and the goose, Harry Golden, our tournament director. Frank Ellenberg does such a good job in the truck. And we mentioned Art Trask, who uh, scores for us from Fresno. Frank is going to leave us for a while. He's going to be uh, doing this some instructing. Has Guppy got a re-rack there in the ninth frame, and he went over and looked at the score. He knows the situation. Two marks. If he can strike here, it would almost lock it up. It would force Baker to strike out to make him mark. That's it. That's what he wanted. That's the best shot he's made of the match. He pulls the pant legs up. Shows his orange socks. I guess they're orange. Baker. Strike in the ninth. Baker, Baker must no strike time. out. Must strike out. He's not going to. Leaves the two pin again. The same pin he left in the seventh frame right now. He goes for bowling 279 to another possible 150. And he might miss this two pin. He got it. And you hate to see it wind up like this because we could not have asked for any more than Mark Baker and Dave Ferraro gave us in that match just previous to this. A 279 to a 278. Baker shows his strength as he flips that ball up in the air and he knows he's out of it. Even if he strikes out, he finishes with 169. That won't be enough. Forced Troop to show up for the 10th frame, but it still wouldn't be enough as he leaves a 10 pin. He just cannot get a strike. He had one strike this whole match, nine in a row as he holds out his hand to congratulate Guppy. And for the third time this summer, Mark Baker has bowled 150 in a championship match and it's going to prey on his mind after a while. As he makes the 10 pin. 
He missed that two pin, and that really turned it totally around. It just changed it. His whole, you know, he was in the match only four pins behind when he missed that. They put him 15, and it just turned everything around. 157, I think, is going to be his final score. 156. Another disappointment for Mark Baker, another $8,250, and he keeps piling up the money, but not the victories. So Guppy Troop is going to win his eighth PBA title. He just needs to stay behind the fouling he did, and he's the winner. He's going to win it with a 180 game. I'm sure he never expected that after watching Ferraro and Baker shoot 279 to 278. But in match play competition, it's not how much you shoot, it's whether you win the game. And he has won the game as he sticks one more time. It's almost like he's lost watching his reaction. And that's just the pro coming out and guppy true. Right, he, he just doesn't know what to do having the thing handed to him like it has been as he strikes in the final ball, wins it with a 184 game. 184 to 156. Guppy Troop is getting a standing ovation here, and he really hasn't been very emotional. He hasn't had a lot to say as he wins it. And would you believe it, folks? He wins it with four strikes. I would not have believed it. All right, we'll come back. We'll talk to Guppy. We have a lot more left. Stick with us. Mike and I are coming back right after this message. Mike Durbin back here at the Highland Bowl in Austin, Texas, and we're going to see Mark Baker take this ball and show his reaction of the whole game. He flips it up, showing his enormous strength, catches it, and then he's going to go on to bowl his 10th frame, but it was his undoing of missing that two-pin in the 7th frame. Guppy Troop finishing it out here, looking really rather grim for having won his 8th PBA title. I think he just didn't expect it to be handed it to him the way it was. He looks at it, it's probably just a sigh of relief on his face or on his heart there and he figures well I'm going to take it at $16,000 and I need the money and Guppy Troop is the winner of the Highland Bowl tournament in Austin Texas and Irv is standing by with the winner Irv thank you Mike Guppy would you believe that you bowl four strikes and win this thing because you, actually I, I'm taking a look at you and it looked like you'd lost with your reaction I think I did uh, Mark bowled a better game than I did I, I mean I wish for people to you know to go bowl a good game before they get to me and Mark did and I, I know how much it takes out of you. I'm glad I got the title and I'm glad it's over with. We need to liven you up a little bit. Why don't you show your socks? We'll get a shot of that and maybe that'll liven you up. Yeah, I got them now. <laughs> that'll do it, huh? New shoes, new shoelaces, and new socks. <laughs> you came over when Mark Baker threw that 279 to David Ferraro and he had a 278 and you said to Mike Durbin, you bowl this guy. I want no part of him. No, I told you to bowl this guy. I want no part of it. <laughs> no, I, I would, uh, I'll tell you what, I'd rather tickle a lion's backside than bowl any of you folks because I can't bowl. But, you know, Mark Baker was sensational. Dave Ferraro was sensational. Emotionally, does, uh, does Baker lose an edge when he uh, goes through that and then he's got to sit down and wait for you? Not really. I think Mark was more, you know, pumped up. I mean, I was more relaxed and I've been in a long time out here, but, uh, I mean, I gagged it off, too. I was trying to, you know, split every time on the right lane or the left lane, and I ended up getting away with it. And like I said, I made my spares, and that's what won. All right, this is what it's all about. We've got some stuff for you. First of all, we've got a little hardware. Pat Fitzpatrick, who does a few things around here, like be the general manager, has something for you. Guppy, on behalf of the staff here at Howland Lanes and all the volunteers that helped make this tournament a success, I'd like to go ahead and present you with a little bit of Texas. Congratulations. Thank you very much. This might fit on the side of my motorhome now, too. <laughs> All right. So that might fit on the side of the motorhome because it is a huge, huge trophy and everything. You dedicated this to your father. Your father's been ill, and you really wanted this for him tonight. I did. I think that's the only reason I cried after I won. But, uh, Dad, I did win. I will see you Monday or Tuesday. I'll be home for the rest of the, well, the, rest of the summer tour and stay there for a while, and then I'll come back out during the fall. You ready for the uh, green stuff? Oh, yeah, I always like the money. All right, Jerry Ray, who is the owner here of the Highland Lanes, has something for you. Guppy, last year I gave you my pants. This year I'll give you the check. <laughs> so 
So, Guppy, last week, last week you finished uh, second. You were you were disappointed. This week you're very, very happy. What's next? I'm quitting for a while. <laughs> I just want to know why Jerry didn't wear a pair of his pants on the television show this week. That's all I want to know. <laughs> Let's bring Mike in. Mike has a few questions for you. Guppy, first of all, I want to congratulate Thank you. you. Uh, even though it was a struggle in the championship match, you bowled great all week, and you bowled just enough to win today. What I wanted to ask you was that somewhere in the middle of the game, you were shooting a spare on the right lane, and you stuck and you hopped, and you almost uh, went right over the foul line. What happened on that particular shot? We're going to ch get a chance to look at it here. You're shooting a spare, and we caught you from the side view right here, and just as you hit your slide, you usually have a very long slide. Something happened yeah, here, I just, and I think my heel just stuck, and I thought that was it. I'm over the foul line, but I stayed behind an inch. <laughs> <laughs> did that affect you the rest of the game? It did that one next frame because I was a little hesitant. I just planted my foot on the next shot, and I left the 210 because I figured maybe I'd stick again. But uh, you know, it did bother me a little bit because if I slide, you know, if I don't slide one shot, it usually bothers me two or three shots. But you were sliding after that particular shot. Yeah, after that one shot, I'd made the bad shot on the on the left lane, and then after that, I just tried to forget about it. When you watched the match between Ferraro and Baker, what did you think you are going to have to bowl when you came over in this match? I wasn't coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was throwing the white towel and, and give it to Mark, but uh, I figured, you know, I've watched people bowl big games and then small games, but and I was only praying that... Uh, they would shoot a small game against me. Well, he's, he certainly did. Congratulations. Thank Guppy. you very much. Folks, did you appreciate what he did here? Did some kind of job, didn't he? Guppy Troop is our winner of the Austin Open, and he'll be back in action. We've had a great time. And the Austin Open has been brought to you by True Value Hardware Stores. We've got what it takes. by Subaru, Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. For Mike Durbin, this is Irv Brown. Thanks for joining us. Next week, we're heading for Waukegan. Join us, please. <laughs>